the materials you will need for painting, I'm gonna go over them right now, is obviously you need some paint. So these are the two brands I like to use, Citadel and Tester's Model Masters Acrylic. You can find both of these at various hobby stores. You can find them online. These you can get, uh, the testers you can get at Hobby Lobby and some places like Walmart. Uh, the Citadel ones, unless you have a hobby shop in your town, you're going to have to get them online. Now, I have recently decided just to use testers for black and white. I no longer use their color unless I'm using their flesh tone colors. For all the other colors, I use Citadel, and I use either base or layer. Layers are really good. Um, you want to thin these out. In fact, you want to thin out all of your paints, and we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, so just wanted to show off what I use. And I do have some other random tester, tester ones here, like this uh, Burnt Sienna. It's got the same consistency as the flat black and the white. And then I got this one here. It's called International Orange. This one is actually, it's already really thin and watery. In fact, it takes a lot of coats to get something to look the way you want it to versus these guys. Now, obviously, you need what you're going to paint. So today, we're going to do something really simple because this is just a basic tutorial. I'm going to be painting this little cross on Triple H's entrance gear. I'm going to be painting that in black. And these little parts up here, they're supposed to be lights. So these four little divots, they're going to be painted red. And on his mask, we're going to paint these wires. We're going to paint these black. So like I said, really, really basic. Now you need some water. I just have this leftover KFC container. So I would say just use any bowl or container that you don't mind getting paint and water in. And I use distilled water or filtered water from the fridge. Uh, water from a water bottle will work as well. You really don't want to use tap water because they have particles and stuff in them. And that can get into your paint, onto your brushes, and that can ruin what you're working on. So I always recommend using distilled water of some kind. Uh, you can also use paint thinner to help dilute your paint. Again, you can get these at any hobby shop. I got this at Hobby Lobby for three bucks. I have a spare container here. I don't always use this. For the Citadel paints, I almost never have to use them. For the Testers one, I do use them. The reason for that being is because Testers has these lids that you have to pry, you know, you have to twist off. Sometimes you can lose your grip on them. And I like to keep them in a container of some sort, just in case it does fall over. It's going to fall over into, into the container and spill, rather than spill on your desk and on your floor. Especially if you got carpet. This is a pain in the ass to get out of carpet. So, so yeah. See, I have it right here in my container. So I can open it, and I know it's going to be safe. But if you knock the container off of your desk, that's a whole other story. So I like to keep it away from myself. Now this is something I picked up over a couple years of doing this. I started using a wet palette. You can buy like a cheap plastic palette. You know, you can get them for a dollar at hobby stores or at Walmart. And that's what some people use. I, I used to use them as well and they work, but the paint dries up and it dries up really quickly. So you have to keep going through paint. A uh, wet palette is a bit of an investment. You get a lot of these, you know, waxy type paper. Uh, this one, this one here is by Formula P3, I think that's how you pronounce it. And again, it's just palette paper. So how, how you set up a wet palette, it's pretty simple. You got your palette paper, tear it off. Now your wet palette, you need a container. You need sponges, just cut them up, fit them inside there. And this is how I set mine up. I have a cup here of distilled water. And I pour it in there just like that. Now we'll set that down back there. We got our paper. We set that down like that. And 
there we go. Now, I do this in two different ways. Sometimes I don't add anything to the wet palette. You don't have to put water on top of it, but sometimes I like to just dip my finger in there and I do rub some water on the wet palette. Not a whole bunch. I don't like submerging the entire wet palette. I always keep a napkin or a paper towel handy just to wipe off paint, just have it lying around. Uh, some people use cloth towels or they have a, a towel specifically designated for paint. I don't have one of those right now, so we're just going to use a napkin. And then of course you need your paint brushes. I use a wide variety of them, but for right now I'm going to stick to using just these two right here. But it's got this really awesome fine tip on here, and this is what I use for a lot of my smaller details. For example, if you see my block of Balor Custom here, I've got white little lightning bolts of electricity going around here. And I actually did the white parts and the little yellow outlines. I did all of those with this brush here, the blue one. I guess I should talk about this one too. This one with the kind of curved edge to it. I don't know the best way to describe this brush, but I really, really like it because I use that to do all of the green areas, the brown, most of the Balor, the Balor font, and then all of the greens and stuff like that and the orange parts. I was able to get a lot of this fine detail with it as well, but I would eventually go back to using this one with the really awesome tip. All right, so we're going to pop open our abandoned black here. Now the nice thing about Citadel is usually their paint is already kind of mixed up. You don't have to stir it or anything like that, but if you do have to stir it, I recommend using the end of your brush, of a brush, and and just stir it up for about 30 seconds. You never want to shake your paints. Uh, shaking causes bubbles. So then I take what's on the end here and I put it on my wet palette. All the excess. Swipe it off onto your napkin or your towel. And now this brush is ready to be worked. All right, so we got our Triple H crown here. And again, the awesome thing about the wet palette too is that it actually kind of distills your paint. So it thins it out because you want to do a lot of really, really thin layers versus just jamming your paintbrush into the paint and then putting it on the figure or on the accessory. It tends to chip off a lot easier if you do it that way. The thicker the paint, the messier it's going to look, and the easier it's going to chip off. You want to do many layers of thinned out paint. So here we go. And the important thing to remember about customs it takes a long time and it takes patience. You literally have to watch paint dry sometimes. So we got to give that a minute or two to let the paint dry. 
So we'll set that down. And then we can start on our cross here. And I've actually got a picture of what Triple H was wearing at WrestleMania 31 over here. So, this entire cross is supposed to be black with a little kind of white outline going around it. So what we are going to do here is we're going to paint this whole thing So we're going to set that down real quick, go back to our wire, and that's looking pretty good. I think we'll probably add a little more water, we'll do one more solid coat. Just make sure we got all the other parts that we might have missed. You don't want to keep going over wet paint because that'll kind of build up and you'll get these weird kind of streaks and creases. And you don't want that. You want it to be as flat and smooth as possible, which is why I distill it as much as I do. back on to our cross here and you can see with those two layers we got a smooth even black surface there Let's see if we can finish up these edges real quick Before we move on, let's get a look at these. Let's get a look at these wires. And I got a little bit of paint right there, where I don't want that. So here's the other thing that you want to have, just in case you want to have a good collection of sandpaper. I have a ton of it, and I like to use this one the most. 
a 6000 series from Alpha Abrasives. Yeah, it's from alphaabrasives.com. You can get these in multiple different packs and stuff like that. So, I like to think of this one as like an eraser for paint. So where was that? Okay, there's a little bit of paint right there where I don't want it. I'm just going to take our sandpaper. And look at that. It's gone. And you see the rest of this is actually really good. It's not flaking off. Smooth. Nothing really built up. Alright. I like it. I consider that a success. Alright. So for right now, I am done with uh, the black paint, so I am going to clean off this brush, stick it in the water. Then I also like to kind of run my hand through it, just to make sure all the paint is off of the brush. And then I'll dry my hand, or my fingertips. I'd go like that, just to make sure again. And the brush is as good as new. So if I wanted to, I could start using a new color with this. So, for safety reasons, we are going to close that. Don't want it to spill. We'll get a new color. We're going to add it to our wet palette there, get a little water. Now the thing with white, white can take many, many coats in order for it to get as smooth and as even as you want it to. For some reason, I just tend to think black is the easiest color to paint. I want to go to the very edge, but not too far over. And I'm not afraid to be a little messy with my line work, because, especially with black, because I can make the white as messy as, messy as I need it to be, but then I can just go over it again with black. So I just want to make sure it's as thinned out as possible. That's always where I have the most trouble is on anywhere where I need to curve, I suck at. Sometimes it takes me a couple tries to get that right. Yeah, usually sometimes I just kind of keep lightly dabbing my brush into the water. Also, I have this much closer to my face when I'm actually painting. It's, it's really weird to do this on camera. So I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it, but it's kind of throwing me off just a tad.
little more water. A little more of that high quality H2O. Now you do want to give it some time to dry. And just a smidgen more. And the reason for that is, of course, when the paint's drying, you don't want to keep moving it around. You want to leave it alone for about 10 to 30 seconds to let it dry, maybe even a little bit longer. If you want to play it safe, give it a full minute. So that's looking a little messy, but like I said, this is really hard to do on camera. So I'm going to give that just a second. I'm going to grab some red here. our palette. I'm going to just add in where those little red details are. Okay, so here is our finished product on the cross. I think it turned out pretty good. Might need to maybe sand down this little bubble right there, smoothen that out, but it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, that's what I was painting in right there with those little lights. So while the camera shut off, unfortunately, I uh, took my, my fine tip brush there, put some black on it, and I darken those like little vents. Don't really know what those are, but just decided to color those in. Added in some black here on the hands. I need to finish up those little inside areas and maybe clean up some of the paint, but you know, from a distance, I like how that turned out. It just adds a little bit of a added level of detail to it. And the one other thing I did was I took some black and some white and I mixed it together and I colored in this uh, wire hose thing just to make it a little bit darker just a little added detail sorry I didn't have this on camera but mm, see I still gotta fix some of that in there but yeah a couple of coats so yeah all I did for the hose you got some black you got your white And you just mix them together and you can keep adding black to it or keep adding white to if you want it to be darker or lighter depending on what you're painting but that's what's really neat about these wet palettes is that you can actually still keep your two colors separated if you wanted to like i could have put the black more over here and the white more over here and just slowly brought them together and then i would have the black here the white here and the gray here in the middle and i could just keep bringing paint over as i needed and again when you're done with it, all you do is seal it up and everything's going to stay there until the next time you come back to it. And here is our finished crown piece. Added in some black around the nose. And yeah, that black hose turned out really well. And then just because I'm a maniac for detail, took my fine tip, put some black on it, and I added in the black on the skulls for the eyes so they stand out just a little bit more. All right, so cleaning up. I usually leave my paints out just because it, or I, I leave out most of my paint 
of what I'm going to be using over the next couple of days, weeks, however long it takes. You know, just, just to remind me that I am working on a custom. But for the wet palette, all you got to do, like I said earlier, just put your lid on it. And it's good to go. And then of course, dump out your paint water. And next, I'll show you how I clean my brushes. Okay, so pay no attention to how dirty my sink is, but I just get a bar of soap, take my brush, and then I clean it off. Go like that. And again, I know I said not to use tap water, but for me, that's just when you're actually painting. It's okay to clean your brushes off with it. Then again, just take it, make sure I'm getting all the paint off. Then I go through, just kind of fan it out. Some clean brushes.